One of the things we heard about, beside the airplane that we're sitting in, which is the CT, now from Aero Jones Aviation, we heard they have the first installation of the Dynon HDX. And so that kind of begs the question to me right away, what is HDX? I'm Dan Johnson, and I'm talking with Kirk Kleinholtz, and Kirk knows everything there is to know about <laughs> Dynon. I'm not, I don't think that's even kidding. You probably do know just about everything. But I want you to first tell me, Kirk, if you will, please, what's HDX? Well, hi, Dan. Thanks for having me. Um, HDX is the next evolution in our Skyview product line. We launched the Skyview system in uh, late 2009. It's been a popular product ever since. It's always been in the flight design aircraft. HDX is the, is the next evolution. It builds on the original Skyview system. One of the major design objectives for the HDX system was to uh, make it more usable in a turbulent cockpit. And is that the reason for this little shelf that I'm seeing down exactly. here? Sure, that's the, uh, the tilted button shelf and knob shelf does a couple things. It gives you a place to brace your hand in turbulence and, and more accurately execute the sure. buttons and knobs. Kind of doing stuff like this, It right? actually so gives you a isn't... better hand position as well, and uh, just for, even in smooth air, your hand position is better for executing the buttons. The bezel design is raised in front of the panel so that you have shelves to rest your hands on for turbulence. Ah, okay, all the way around, yeah, okay. Exactly. Yeah, some people could think, oh, how come it's not flush mounted? Well, it's not flush mounted for a pretty good reason. Yep, exactly. Okay, Another mechanical difference is the Skyview, original Skyviews have a joystick knob combination, and in turbulence, the joysticks do start to become hard to use. So we've eliminated the joystick action, and this knob rotates and presses okay. in the center, but no longer joystick action. Yeah, you know, I mean, I kind of love the versatility of that, but I admit I was often a little frustrated with it because I couldn't always get it while flying to go where I wanted it to go. Right, right. So giving up the joystick action was kind of a mixed blessing. It compelled some other changes in the overall user interface, but those turned out remarkably well. We ended up uh, expanding the implement implementation of touch on the HDX. Here's an example of a new menu. All of these features are touchable. Uh, all of the touchable areas in the system are, are much larger and easier to use both in smooth air and turbulence than compared to the Skyview Touch. Okay, so give uh, us an example there. Everybody's got to adjust a transponder, put some codes in once in a while. Sure, starting back from the beginning. Okay, so I here would... you are, you're flying along, ATC says squat code, blah, blah, blah. So I would press the menu button and access the transponder control Look at that. panel. Wow. Nice and there's big my buttons. control entry. Here are my mode buttons for the transponder. And if I step out for a moment, there's another uh, touch-based method. You simply touch the transponder ah. enunciation. That works in the original Skyview as well, but in Skyview it leads you to a bottom menu. In HDX we give you this very large touchable panel. Another accommodation really central to our design approach to touch in the cockpit is to ensure that everywhere possible, you also have access to hard controls. So ah, if you're not okay. using touch, you still have the ability to enter in a hard uh, a, a code using the knob to select, move the cursor and the center of the knob to, to enter. Okay, so it doesn't uh, joystick anymore, but it does have a push down or rotate right left. Yep, the, the original Skyview system also has a knob center press action. But again, thinking back to the joystick and turbulence, sometimes when you try and impress the center of the knob, you get a joystick input I've instead. had exactly that problem. So again, that was one of the key design objectives was to improve that overall experience, and we've really succeeded with the HDX. So HDX, what does that stand for? Does it stand for something, or is it just a nice bunch well, of letters? Well, you'll have to talk to Mike Schofield, our <laughs> marketing director. He's the guru of that. I always offer lots of good naming ideas. I don't think they've ever chosen <laughs> one of my naming ideas. So they ideas. ask you and then they don't do it. Okay. I think the combination, though, is is um, evocative of high definition because another physical characteristic of the, the HDX display is a much higher resolution display compared to the Skyview. Yeah, I have to admit, I, as I said, I got a lot of hours on Skyview and boy, this, this looks more like my Macintosh with a retina screen. Yep, the, the screen really pops to your eye. Now, we also switched to... Uh, away from the anti-glare coating, which gives the original Skyview a matte type finish, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we switched to an anti-reflective coating, which gives a glossy appearance. And uh, I tell people, you will love the glossier display unless you don't. In most circumstances, <laughs> the glossy display is much easier to read. Even when the sunlight is directly over your shoulder, you'll get a bright fireball where the sun is reflected, uh -huh. but the rest of the screen stays bright and vibrant. 
compare that to the original Skyview system and all, all screens that have a matte anti-glare finish, uh, you don't get a bright fireball from the sun reflection, but the overall light diffuses across the whole display. It remains readable, but it's not as bright, not as much contrast. Now, it still remains to be seen. There are going to be some, some aircraft with glass canopies that just can't deal with the, the reflectivity of a, of a glossy screen. Yeah, this one's quite good because you've right. got a lot of cabin here that's blocking but, the screen from that light. But our, our equipment is popular in aircraft like air cams and bubble canopy yeah, aircraft. Yeah, yeah, right, okay. We think some of those pilots are going to want to switch back to the anti-glare matte finish and we're going to offer that as an option. Okay, for the, all right. So you will DX. address those open cockpit guys if you want to mm -hmm. call them that. People are going to like the fact that we will offer a trade-up option to HDX. Okay. We, we work very hard to maintain backward compatibility with all of our equipment, and the HDX display is a direct plug-in replacement for a Skyview screen. Um, just the overall user experience is just excellent. People are going to really love the new menu system. They're going to love the fact that their VFR GPS navigation controls are right here on this constant top menu. And... You know, one of the biggest things is the HDX really fleshes out Dynon's product line. We're, we're really proud of the fact that now with the addition of the Advanced Flight Systems 5600 displays and now three distinct flavors of Skyview, we have a very comprehensive uh, product line and it just reinforces our dedication to the experimental amateur build and light sport market. And, and we think we do that better than just about anybody in the market. Well, uh, it's certainly Dynon is, is, I think, dominant out here. There's some other brands that do pretty well too, but everybody knows Dynon. Uh, 10 years ago, nobody knew Dynon. So you've done very, very well in that. One last question for you before you run. Is this available? This is the, the, what I would call the large screen. Do you make the smaller version of this as well as you did in the Skyviews? We do. The, this is the 10 inch. HDX display. Uh, we will also be offering the 7 inch HDX and a distinct difference again between the original Skyview. Uh, Skyview has always had 7 and 10 inch displays. When we added touch to the Skyview system, it was only available on the 10 inch display. Ah, okay. But I with missed the that AD, detail. But... With the HDX product, uh, both the 7 and 10 inch displays will be touchable. Cool. For those guys with little smaller panels, uh, that can be very important. Uh, I love the big one, but you know you have to have the, you have to have the space for it, no question. So glad you're doing it both ways, uh, Kirk. I know you got to go. I don't want to hold you any longer, but quick, give us your uh, address so people can find you on the web to ask all things Dynon. I know you got a lot of videos and a ton of information. Where's the, where do we send people? Up uh, our website is uh, www.dynonavionics.com. Dynonavionics.com. Thanks so much to Kirk Kleinholz for talking with us today.